everyone, welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? Psalms 33, verse 4, and the A clause, which says, The word of the Lord is right. Now listen. Listen, I'm right. I'm back here in the sanctuary. You know, we choose the sanctuary when it's empty so we can have our God first sign behind us there because we come from uh, the standpoint, the point of view of God first. That is the God of the Bible. We believe that when we put his ways above ours, put his ways ahead of ours, we win every time. Now, for those of you who says we need to leave religion out of this and relieve religion out of that, I'm telling you right now, that's not going to happen because when you take God's truth out of a thing, all you're left with is foolishness. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says in verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to naught the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the ruler of this world? Hath not God made foolishness? the wisdom of the world. Let me read verse 20 again. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? That is, where is the scholar? Where is the disputer? The disputer, I said ruler, the disputer, the philosopher of the world. Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of the world? When you take God's truth out, all you're left with is foolishness. Verse 21, I got to put this in. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, but it pleased God in the foolishness of preaching or by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I'm a preacher and I want to talk to you today about some things. I got a question for you. Here's the question today. How did we go from uh, April 29th, 1997, the Advocate Magazine, 1997. This was the argument of the, uh, the, the homosexual community. It's nobody's business what we do in the privacy of our own bedrooms. It's nobody's business what we do in the privacy of our own bedrooms. This was the argument in 97. How did we go from that to today's argument they're taking over the bathrooms. Now, how did this happen? And uh, I'll say this, many of you, many of you Christians, you actually argued the argument that the, that the homosexuals, that the LGBTQ community uh, argued in, uh, in 97. And many of you sad to say you're being the devil's advocate for the arguments that they make now. But I will remind you Christians out there who pride yourself in being the devil's advocate, remember, Jesus says, uh, you shall be witnesses of me. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We're not called to be the devil's advocate. We're called to be the advocate of Jesus Christ. Now, I got to work today. Let me take off my coat. Robert here got something that I need to do. Need to talk to the people. Praise the Lord. Y'all just hanging here with me here. Need to get a little comfortable. We are witnessing some un unprecedented things uh, in our nation. Um, first of all, before we go to the nation, let me talk about things that have gone on in the world, in the world. Our president, President Barack Obama, behaved at times more like a king. He behaved more uh, uh, like a suzerain than he behaved like a president. For an example of suzerainty, look in Genesis chapter 14 and read Genesis 14, uh, the battle of Catalemor. Catalemor was a suzerain. He actually tried to control other independent nations as though they were his own states under his own rule. Well, our president uh, did the same thing in 2000. And uh, 13, the president uh, goes to South Africa. He goes to Tang Tanzania. He goes to Senegal in 2013. Um, uh, the president, uh, uh, he even, uh, the, 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 there's an alliance called the Evangelical Alliance in Kenya, which represents 700 pastors. 
Here's what they said, quote, President Obama is welcome to visit Kenya this summer, but please leave the preaching to us, end of quote. Uh, even the uh, president of Kenya's, pr Kenya's deputy president, William Rotu, said to a church service on Sunday, quote, homosexuality is against the plan of God. Could you imagine the president of the United States saying something like that? that? We have heard that in the U.S. they allow gay relationships and other dirty things. I want to say as a Christian leader, now this is a quote, I want to say as a Christian leader, we will defend our country, Kenya. We will stand for our faith and our country. Wow. End of quote. Wouldn't it be something if the president of the United States, who also, by the way, claims to be a Christian, would say the same things. But instead, he tries to get Kenya to change their position on uh, LBGTQ relationships. He goes to them. They don't go to him and, and says to him, Mr. President, you need to adjust your position. The suzerain. King Obama goes to Kenya. He does the same thing right here uh, with uh, uh, Nigeria. Uh, this is December the, uh, the, the 9th, uh, 2011. President Barack Obama threatening to cut off aid to Nigeria if recent anti-bill, anti-gay bill is passed. But Nigerians are unwavering. Now, why would the president of the United States get into this and, and go against a, a, a sovereign nation, Nigeria, and, and threaten to, to cut funding, not because Nigeria is bombing somebody, not because Nigerians, uh, the nation of Nigeria is killing Christians, not because uh, Nigeria is doing something immoral, ungodly, or un illegal, or taking a, a, a anti-Bible stance, by the way, the, the way things are going now, if you take an anti-Bible stance, you're praised. Um, but because Niger the Nigerians believe, uh, they agree with the scripture, that uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, queerness, bisexuality, and the like is sin. President Obama's $100 million tour of the AIDS-ravaged continent last year, the president offended several heads of state by publicly denouncing their nation's laws against homosexual behavior. Now, the states are AIDS-ravaged, and yet the president goes and offends and offend. I, 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 actually, I, I stumbled on the word offend. I thought I, I thought I saw it wrong. He offends several heads of state by publicly denouncing their nation's laws against homosexuality. And in April, uh, the African, Pacific, and Caribbean group of states released a strongly worded resolution condemning wealthy Western nations for their repeated attempts to blackmail African nations into legalizing homosexual behavior by threatening to withhold funding. What kind of Christian leader would do something like that? Why? You got to ask yourself. You got to ask yourself eventually, my friends. What is it? What is this affinity? What is this love? What is this Oh my, what, what is this between our president and all things LGBTQ? I don't see it for the life of me. I can't understand it, but uh, it's apparent that that's what it is. Now, I got ahead of myself. The scripture that I'm speaking from today is Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. It says, he that justified the wicked and condemned the just, uh, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. That's what's going on today. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that call uh, uh, that put light for darkness and darkness for light, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We're living in a day now where right is wrong and wrong is right, where up is down and down is up. I don't understand it, my friends, for the life of me. Now, notice this, and I'm going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. If I don't get to it in this section, I'll get to it in the next because I want to give it time. We have many states in this country 
that are in violation, that are truly in violation of federal law. Not made up violations, true violations. I'll give an example. First of all, our president, this great leader, threatened on multiple occasions in 2015 to shut down the government, to shut down the entire U.S. government before he would defund Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood, an organization that was founded for the eradication of black people. That's what Margaret Singer said. We can't let the word get out. That the purpose of Planned Parenthood is the extermination of the black race. Planned Parenthood has kills more blacks per day than the Klan did. Kills more blacks uh, every uh, two, uh, per day than the Klan killed uh, in throughout their entire history. Over over 1,000. 876 blacks die per day as a result of abortion. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. There are 4,000 abortions in this country per day. Half of them are from the black community. It's the great killing machine. It is the number one killer of black people. Planned Parenthood. Abortion. Abortion kills more blacks than all other leading causes of death of the top five leading, five or six leading causes of death combined. And yet when they showed Planned Parenthood breaking the law, cavalierly talking about selling body parts, breaking the law. And by the way, most of those little body parts were black babies. Do you not know that our president would never as much as even watch the videos? And instead, he and the attorney general, they, they decided to go after the people who made, who taped the Planned Parenthood leaders talking about killing the babies. <sighs> you got to admit there's something wrong with that. Let's move from Planned Parenthood. Let's go to places like, oh, let me see, Denver, Colorado, states like Denver. Legalized marijuana, right? The people of Denver decided that they're going to make pot legal. In Denver, they have more places to buy marijuana than they have Starbucks. Marijuana is everywhere. One little problem about that stuff. It's against the federal law. Has the Obama administration threatened to withhold funding from Denver? Have they threatened Denver and said, we're going to pull back federal dollars? No. Denver's all right. And all of these sanctuary cities, look it up. The sanctuary cities, and they're holding uh, 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 illegals and giving them jobs and providing them sanctuary. They're in violation of federal law. And yet, there is no threat to withhold funding from the sanctuary cities. There's no threat of big brother government coming in and being heavy handed and coming against these sanctuary cities, man, you're talking about selectively, uh, selective prosecution. You're talking about failing to uphold the oath of office, failing to uphold the oath that says I will protect and defend and uphold the laws of the United States of America. I mean, you're talking about being selective. I mean, the president under with his uh, previous attorney general, uh, Eric uh, Holder, they just decided one day out the blue. We will no longer d defend the Defense of Marriage Act, even though it was the law voted into law under President Bill Clinton. 1996, the president of the United States says, well, you know what? We're not going to defend it anymore. Man, did anybody tell us? I, 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 don't, think, I don't think we were told that we were, were in 2008 uh, were voting in a king. I thought we were voting in a president and whether you voted for him or not, the president still has to, uh, you know, there's a thing called the Constitution. There's a thing called, you know, law and order. You can't rule by whim. You got to go by the, the rules. And yet they decided, you know, out the blue, just pull it out. We're not going to defend the Defense of Marriage Act anymore. 
and nothing was done. You know, the, the, the Republicans uh, who were in power, uh, who, had, who was in, in charge of uh, uh, both houses, they were wimps also. They wouldn't fight. <laughs> That's the reason why we're in the political situation we're in today. And uh, people are looking for somebody who will fight, and we'll see how that turns out. But uh, uh, the Defense of Marriage Act, we're not going to defend it, and they just turned it down. And all of a sudden, in 2000, well, this year, 2016, back in February, the Charlotte City Council uh, 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 approves a law, passes a law. Um, and by the way, they were, the law that they passed was headed up by a guy named Chad, Chad Surveillance, I believe that's his name, a convicted sex offender. Now, it stands to reason that a convicted sex offender would want access <laughs> for men to have access to the ladies' room and vice versa. On a 7 to 4 vote, the Charlotte City Council uh, approved it. Now, at first, when they tried to do it, it failed. And so they went and voted in some liberals and they got it passed. Uh, a year ago, the ordinance fell six to five. And so they went and got uh, uh, some, some, some liberals on the board and, and they, uh, they went against the people of Charlotte. The people of Charlotte overwhelmingly spoke against this ordinance. Plus, the Charlotte City Council was warned that if you pass this ordinance, that the, uh, the state would overturn it because... The General Assembly has ultimate power over local municipalities. Had this law stood, and, and, and nobody's talking about what occasioned HB2. Had this law stood, churches, businesses, both private and public, would have been forced to allow men to use the women's restroom, locker rooms, dressing rooms, or any place where women change clothes or women uh, experience a degree of undress. Because keep in mind, don't get confused, a transgendered woman is a man. Hello. And a transgendered man is a woman. I've said it and I'll say it again, you can't change your gender. One of the biggest charades, one of the biggest lies ever told is that you can actually change your gender by having perfectly good and functioning body parts cut off. Let me tell you something. After you finish mutilating yourself, you're free. That's what's, that's what's left. That, that, that's cold. I know in this day of political correctness, oh, Pastor Wooden, Bishop Wooden, how can you be so mean? Well, what else do you call uh, Bruce Jenner? Standing uh, uh, about six, seven, six, five, big guy, and, and with a wig on, with a man's voice, had f facial softening surgeries, puts on a skirt, he looks horrible, still has his male plumbing, and you actually are so naive and so weak and so accommodating, you Laodicean Christian. <laughs> you won't fight, you just accommodate, you just assimilate. God haven't called us to assimilate. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Now I'm wrapping it up because I got part two to tell you, but you're so weak that you'll actually call this man a woman. The Charlotte Ordinance would allow men to have access to the ladies' bathroom, and not just men like Bruce Jenner, but real predators, guys who would stop at nothing, dressed just like me and you, to have access to our women. Now, stay tuned, listen to part two, because I want to talk to you, and you notice this, Brother Wooden talks facts, just the facts, man, just the facts. I talk facts about what's going on. And I'm telling you, the true Christian today, hey, if you're going to, if you expect to be able to practice biblical Christianity in the future, you better stand on the word of the Lord and you better join us in this fight. The Bible says this, what say you?